I think it's totally different. I think the first time I, I, I remember like putting out driver's license like two years ago and obviously being nervous and scared, but I think it's, it's a different ball game now. I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm lucky to be in a different position than I was then. So yeah, it's all different. Yeah. But the thing is the music reflects, um, this, this position you're in now, it, it, there's a confidence to this. I mean, I think when you begin the song, it feels like, okay, this is Olivia finding something she needs to express through her instrument. And then it switches and the tempo kicks in and the performance has to rise. And, um, so how did the song present itself like that? How did you know it needed to go somewhere else than where it began? I mean, I wrote this song like on the piano, super chill, uh, in December of last year. And my producer, Dan, and I finished it in January and finished writing it. And um, I've just always been really obsessed with songs that are very dynamic. Like my favorite songs are high and low and reel you in and spit you back out. Yeah. And so uh, we wanted to do a song where it just kind of crescendoed the entire time. And it sort of reflects kind of the pent up anger that you have for it. It's not easy. I mean, to get to that place in a performance where, especially in a recording environment and you don't have the chemistry of the audience that are pushing you on, to get to that place where you rise to the end um, for the deliverable, for the line, um, you know, suck me dry like a goddamn vampire. That whole thing of like, rising up. How did you get there? How did you get to that mindset of getting there? Was it was it hard to push yourself to that place? I'm very emotional. And I think my my background in child acting kind of helps me a little bit get really emotional when I'm singing and me and Dan my producer we sometimes have a joke where like if I'm not like giving a performance that's like emotional enough on the on the microphone he'll literally like film me and I'll do it better just because I'm being filmed (laughs) (laughs) that's hilarious what a hack that's such a hack I know, it's hot. So, you know, next time you need an emotional performance, just film yourself. <laughs> oh my God, it's too funny. So i got to ask you this question, going back to where this all began, this new era, Guts, what this album represents. What, did, was there ever a time when you felt like the last album and the touring and everything that went with it stopped? Or did it just continue? I guess it's, it's a little bit of a continuation. I feel like musically we worked really hard to make something that felt fresh and new and exciting to me without completely, like, just diverging from everything that we did on the last album. And so to me, this new album Guts and this new song Vampire kind of feels like a, a natural progression, a natural step forward um, in my like life and, 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 and sound and, and music. I'm amazed that, you know, given how hard you worked and how much you went through, both incredibly positive but also life-changing, that you had anything in the tank at the, you know, at the end of that tour and everything else going on. Can you... Are there words that you've been able to find or emotions or feelings that, that, that best describe how you felt when you finally kind of came to a point at the end of that tour and it was like, okay, what, is, what, what just happened? Yeah, no, it's exactly like that. Um, I think that everything that happened was so quick and so life-changing, like you said, and so intense. Um, and I think it wasn't until after I got off of tour where I could kind of sit still and and chill out enough to actually like process everything that happened. Like, wow, that was really insane. Like that, that doesn't happen every day. That's pretty amazing. It doesn't happen at all. I mean, it's so rare. All the negative stuff too. And so I think, I think it was nice to have some time to just kind of process that for myself. And I talk about that a little bit in in, in Guts in your album. It's interesting you mentioned that, you know, it wasn't all up. There's a lot of up, but there also with up comes a lot of scrutiny and a lot of people that are kind of like searching for reasons. It's just a strange, complex experience being human and we sure make it hard on each other. Were there times when that, when, when your confidence, even when you were at the height of your success, was you were struggling with any of it? And if so, how did you pull yourself back and stay focused? I mean, completely. I think, I think it's impossible not to struggle with such a, intense lifestyle like that is but um I think I have a really wonderful support system around me and have wonderful parents and, and wonderful team and wonderful friends and I really rely on them and uh, I, I I don't know what I would do without that but uh yeah it's it's, it's a pretty crazy time I'm uh, I'm grateful for all of it but it is it's it's definitely a lot yeah it's great and, and I've, I've mentioned this on my show a few times leading up to this since you announced you were coming back um, that you know, we all really respect the fact you took your time, um, that you that you took some space, um, and and it wasn't just like keep the train on the track. There's a lot of people out here who want to keep hearing these songs, keep the train on the track. How did you separate yourself from any kind of external pressures or demands or attention to to give yourself such an insular space to 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 find out what you needed to say? Like, how did you tuck yourself away successfully? I think it was really tough, honestly, at first, uh, when we first kind of started writing this album, like a year or a year and a half ago, 
I remember I couldn't like sit at the piano without thinking about what other people were going to think about what I was playing. Like I would, I would just sing anything and I'd just be like, oh, but like, will people say this and that? And will people speculate about whatever? And um, there's terrible mindset to be in. I was in that, I was in that mindset for a really long time. Um, and it wasn't until I kind of switched my mindset into like, you know what, all I have to do is I just have to make music that I would like to hear on the radio. That's my sole job as an artist making music and I, everything else is out of my control and um so once I started really believing that things became a lot easier and, and creativity started growing um, like more like it should you know I mean you have such an amazing ability to take a look at something that's that's happened either positive or negative in a, in a, in a relationship environment that idea of connecting to human beings and turning it into a song that at times can feel very visceral and very vicious because basically it can be that. That experience can 100% lead you into those emotions. And you're unafraid to put that in songs. Um, but are there times when when you have to sort of almost cognitively find a way to shroud that raw emotion? Or is, is your job, again, just to put it all on the line and who gives a f what anybody thinks? I mean, I guess it's a little of both. I think when you're writing something and you're in that creative flow you can never think about oh is this too intense oh my gosh am I gonna like upset people I think maybe that comes after because like you know I think it's impossible not to think about that but I, I really try to just think about how I feel and what I want to say when I'm sitting at the piano doing that I think it'd be doing a disservice to the art to think about anything else when did you come up with the album title I mean we'll get into all this hopefully at a later date and we'll dive way more into the themes behind the yeah. record but that's information that's out there um and it's it's kind of perfect right sour is kind of how you feel when you're developing that emotion guts is what you need to get through it that's what I take from it so where did the title come from when did you realize you got it I've had it for a long time I had it actually when I was making sour I'm like oh, I want the next one to be guts I like had it in my head I'm like four letters all caps just like sour I love it I just think it's an interesting word. Like people use it in so many interesting contexts, like spill your guts, like hate your guts, I think is a really interesting term. It means bravery, but it also means like intuition, like listen to your gut. I just think it's like all of these things that like coincidentally were things that I've, I've really been thinking about um, in this like chapter. It's also like there's a grossness to it that I think that kind of speaks to what you are drawn to, which is, is this idea of being able to write these pop songs and coming from this place where everything was contained and here's your performance. I'm talking about, you know, when you would be on TV and whatnot. Um, but then you, listening to, to, to the song and, and the way that you made your first album and parts and your performances, you seem to be drawn to, um, you know, a distortion of that reality, something that's kind of a bit up like I, I think that's one of the things that people are really attracted to your music for are you any closer to understanding like what drives that because you could keep it really pristine and clean and straight down the line and it would smash the shit out of it but you like to f it up <laughs> yeah I do like to f it up but definitely that's true um I don't know I think it's I listen to a lot of like kind of heavier stuff growing up and that's what I've always been drawn to but you know I I think um in my like regular day-to-day -day life I, I I don't get to express those feelings of like rage and like dirty shit and like messing shit up and i think in music you can you, you have the freedom to express you know feelings that you don't get to express in your everyday life and so i think maybe that's why i'm so drawn to it because i don't i don't get to you know be messy every day that's why we need it as well you know because i mean i think that you know songs and music that comes along that gives us a chance to like lash out in that way it really is a way for us to process all that um how's your life how's lifestyle i mean you're about to begin again um there's a sense of, I'm sure there's an excitement and a total sense of um, anticipation from your point of view more than anything to get this music out there and see what people think and perform it and build your new show and all that. But it sort of requires a balance, I think. Otherwise, you're going to be off balance real fast. I mean, how is life right now just, just behind the music? Life's pretty good. I mean, definitely eagerly anticipating putting these songs out. I think I've lived with them for so long. I'm actually very excited to put them into someone else's hands and kind of, you know, not have ownership over them anymore. Um, but life's good. I'm, I, I'm in my empty, uh, New York apartment right now. I, I was going to say, man, you either got some serious feng shui sh going on or like you're living like an international spy. No, I know it's, it's bad. I'm like, Oh my God, they're going to think like I'm in some like weird, like drug house right now. It's totally empty, like no furniture. Um, but yeah, I just, I just, I just moved to New York. And so that's a fun change. I've been enjoying it a lot. Uh, when did you decide you wanted to, to move, to move across country? I mean, I've always loved it. Lots of my friends live here. And uh, we actually made a lot of the album um, at Electric Lady in, in uh, Greenwich Village over here. Um, and uh, it's just so inspiring. And I, I just love the energy. I, I always rolled my eyes whenever, whenever people were like, yeah, I just like write so much in New York. It's like so good. The vibes are so good. I'm like, really? And then I get here and I'm like, wow, it's like everything is true. I just, I, I love it so much. It, it really works for me. I was talking to Ed Sheeran about that because, um, you know, we, last time we spoke, 
we did so in a, in a really in a beautiful place in New York overlooking all of Manhattan. I said, could you ever live here? Would you ever feel it like you could disappear in a, in a city like New York? I mean, do you feel invisible there? Not quite invisible, but yeah, you can kind of blend in a little bit more than I feel like you can in LA. And, um, you can just talk to anyone, you know, there's like no old barred really. People are just so interesting and, and like, a, I don't know, I feel like you can have like organic, spontaneous experiences more here. How is your incognito level of incognito skill now? I mean, how, how good are you uh, being able to go out and get a pint of milk and some bread at the local bodega and not be Olivia Rodrigo who made sour? Wow, pint of milk and some bread is crazy. That's, I don't know if I'm ever doing that, but yes, I, um, I, I, my incognito skills have been pretty good. The masks are kind of um, a nice godsend these days. You know, you can just hide behind them. You have pimples. Like nobody sees your face it's fine are you saying are you are you either are you gluten are you living a gluten-free dairy-free environment or are you just refusing to buy bread and milk olivia oh my god i don't know i don't know why in my head i'm just thinking like like you're just eating a, a slice of bread and drinking milk no olivia, uh, these, olivia these are foundational ingredients for other things i just never cook i'm like why is he just eating a slice of bread because like, in my head like that's all you do with bread i like don't know how to make anything <laughs> right so you're on the postmates all day i get i respect that i'm not saying i'm not i'm just saying like maybe yeah okay maybe we'll pick this up at a later date olivia rodrigo everybody it's really good to see you thank you for joining us once again welcome back uh we missed your music and it's great to see you living so healthy and so well and good luck with the um with the beginning of all of this and i can't wait to catch up with you and dive deeper into guts thanks Sam. it's always a pleasure talking to you i appreciate you